In this video, I'm going to show you three different ways to take a still life object and abstract it to create an artwork that um, is based on still life but is abstract. You don't need um, elaborate still life, just two objects that interest you. I love um, botanicals and I also like sort of domestic um, sort of vessels and uh, just sort of everyday objects. So I've used um, a bottle and a plant and um, all I would suggest is um, try to get two, ob two objects that are quite different. So bringing those two together give me different shapes and, um, and I'm interested in them so that's why I use them. So in these three different methods, um, there's a little bit of drawing, but it's really drawing um, to provide, to find shapes and just to, not to sort of slavishly reproduce the object, but just to um, get a resemblance of it. Um, and then we abstract it in three different ways and that's a lot of fun. So come and have a look. So here are the drawings that I've done. And as you can see, um, there a plant and a bottle. And the way that I do the drawings is by doing a blind contour drawing. And what you do here is you follow the edge of the object. That's all you're looking at. And I just look at the edge. I don't really look at the paper or the pencil or what I'm actually drawing. I'm just sort of recording what I, the line or the shape of the edge of the object. Um, and it doesn't have to be exact. And of course I do come back and look at the paper at times just to make sure that my pencil is going back to the right place but that's the way that I do a blind contour drawing so that you're sort of recording you're tr recording the object but it's not exactly as the object is but it looks very much like it. Um, as you can see with the bottles I have sort of abstracted them a little bit more. Now I've got a big fat, um, vivid type felt tip pen and I'm just going into some of the negative shapes that I've created in this um, drawing and I'm just darkening those so that I get a contrast in, in tone or value and around the bottles I'm doing the same. I'm sort of creating shapes with it as well so I'm looking at the shapes within the drawing and I'm looking at the shapes that, that the drawings create around the the actual object. Now having done that I want to disrupt it so I'm going to turn them over so I don't see them anymore and just cut the papers randomly into sort of smaller strips and then um, in my sketchbook I'm just arranging them. Now I'm not going to use all the pieces but I'm just looking for um, to create a composition on that page where the darks and lights are distributed um, in a pleasing sort of way and where I can sort of link up the odd sort of line or edge um, so that some edges are disrupted and some edges sort of have a flow from one piece to the other. And I've combined the, the drawings of the bottle with the um, plant as well. And then in the gaps I can come in and just um, add more shapes um, and uh, link up uh, edges and lines and shapes and just with an eye on the whole composition I'm just looking to keep it sort of balanced so that my eye will travel through the composition and that it's quite balanced. Okay here's the second method. You take some collage paper and I've just got some scraps here. Now you can use collage paper that you've made yourself. You can use um, photocopied photos which that one was and just a variety is is what you want and then back to the drawing same thing blind contour drawing just looking at the edges and um, once again it doesn't have to be exactly as the object is just a resemblance and then draw a shape around the drawing and then this creates a positive and a negative shape so with an exacto knife I'm going to cut out um, following that blind contour edge that I created and there I have a positive and a negative of that drawing 
and those are two shapes that I can use in my abstract composition. So now I'm going to do the same with the bottle and I'm abstracting the form of the bottle you know in the drawing as well so that's um, you know it looks resembles a bottle but it's not a true representation of it and once again cutting out the positive and the negative shape okay and the same on I think I used three different um, collage papers there and then I'm just going to arrange that these shapes um, on my in my sketchbook just to create a composition and so this takes a bit of fiddling around and working out what works and what doesn't and how I want to have it and then gluing it down and um, then once it's glued down what you could do is you could draw from that composition um, but it's just an interesting starting point to start with the still life and then abstract it into shapes and lines and uh, so here I am using the shapes to create drawn shapes that are sort of linking and filling in gaps in this composition. So those are the first two methods and you can see that they use the same objects um, in two different ways but they are both sort of abstracted and that could be the beginning of a painting or um, you know a development of ideas around that. So here's the third one. This one I'm going to start with some paint. I'm going to make an interesting surface to begin with first of all. So I've got some dark paint and then some light paint over the top. And then when that's dry I'm going to do the blind contour drawing using a coloured pencil and now I can come in with those the other um, the other drawings that I've made in those previous exercises and I can stick those down because I've got darks and lights I'm sticking to the same sort of color so that they're going to integrate nicely into that paint that I had already put down so what I've got now is a lot of line and paint so now I'm going to bring in some shape using the same method that I showed in the previous composition so now I've got a positive and a negative shape and I can play around with those and see if they add interest to this composition. But I'm trying to create uh, interesting effects with that paint and then bringing in some representational sort of drawing very loosely, a little bit like blind contour drawing but with a paintbrush, a very fine paintbrush and a little bit of paint, just bringing those shapes and drawings in over the top of the um, paintwork that it's gone in underneath. So this is a sort of a combination of the ideas that we've seen in the other two methods. So I'm looking for where I've got dark areas and then I can put white paint over the top and where I've got light areas and I can draw with a dark um, paint over the top of that. And that's the third method. So there's three ways that you can take still life and create a really interesting artwork um, by abstracting them.